Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending August the 12th, 2022. Um, finally gotten uh, through the great flood of 2022 here in the office and getting uh, things uh, quasi normalized. We're coming back into a new normal. So glad that we didn't miss a beat, neither did the markets. This rally has been great. So right now we've got about two and a half hours left in the trading day as I, as I uh, speak, but um, We've had, so the 200 days are now coming into play, okay, as resistance uh, for, for the bull rally uh, here this summer. So the, uh, the Russell 2000 actually breached its 200 day. It's now down below it, but at least it pierced it once. So that's a good move uh, there for the market, uh, for the broad market as a whole. But the mid, uh, mid caps and the small caps are, are approaching their 200 days. Uh, the, uh, the 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 S and P is still just about one and three quarters per, uh, percent shy of its 200 day. The Nasdaq's now over a 13, uh, right at flirting with 13,000, and uh, and so it's it's still about four percent shy of its 200 day. I'm expecting those 200 days to um, to come into play uh, next week, and, and and you know that could be that could be the cap uh, on on this great up move. Had spectacular earnings uh, season. Um, a lot of earnings came in. The guidance for Q3 though not so optimistic, and plus uh, you know there would, there's going to be this tension now as core inflation stays high. Overall inflation started pulling back. But the Fed is going to probably likely to remain uh, fully hawkish. Uh, the demand on on getting those rates up uh, until the economy slows to, to sustain a two percent inflation rate, we're still well above that. Core inflation is still well above that. Uh, if um, you know by several points, and so if they can start to get it to come down, then that's that's where we can be. But uh, that's kind of where we're at on that instance. The uh, bond markets are, are having a bit of a rally here. We've seen some of the yields really, uh, really uh, pull back um, uh, on, on those uh, this week. And so bonds are picking up the best, uh, best, of, uh, best of the best uh, right now would be natty gas, okay, going uh, through the summer here, probably in preparation. That's those little futures contracts, probably in preparation for the fall. Uh, anyway, all the returns on the uh, structured uh, note plays that we have coming in very, very nicely, playing very handsomely. Uh, if things continue, likely to see several of those positions get called away uh, come the fall. But we're not in the fall yet. Now, having said all of those things, I wanted to share an anecdote with you this week about what's gone on uh, in, in, in my life, okay, uh, in, in my close family. So my in-laws have now both fallen uh, victim to uh, uh, the ravages of, of, of aging, okay? And um, uh, father-in-law is coming back very nicely, doing very well, but uh, the, the mother-in-law had a stroke uh, in, uh, in, in July, and um, that's, that's carried you know, forward into August, and she's uh, doing well. But the point is, is now we both have those in the house. And so, um, and they're wonderful people. But what I'm saying is, is that this happens statistically right at, they are both right at the age, plus or minus a year of 85, okay? So this is why we do planning right at between, you know, focused on the age of 85. It seems like just the statistics fall in and out there uh, every time, okay, plus or minus a, a year or so. So this is why we, we do our focal points, getting ready for long-term care at age 85, because let me tell you once again, Medicare only pays for 100 days of care once there's an issue of long-term care is raised, okay, when there's, a, when there's a situation that says something, somebody is not going to get any better in a hospital type situation, and it is but they can't go back into their home, then it is time then that they have to be moved into a long-term care of some sort. Now, Georgia Medicaid, uh, you, you know, has a, has a, um, uh, an incentive uh, to, to go back in, a, in a home care, but that program has yet to be really uh, developed and played out such that there's enough funding 
to pay into uh, for for a lot of people to be at in-home care with the kind of services that they need to have based upon Medicaid. And remember, Medicaid, you're only allowed to retain $2,000 in, in assets, call it resources, okay? And uh, you can keep some equity in your home, you can keep a car, but uh, really uh, any other kind of uh, uh, deferred uh, assets are going to be treated kind of like an annuity. So those when those, those uh, RMDs are paid out, you have to spend all of that on your care. Uh, Medicaid is a suboptimal solution uh, for long-term care planning. We have much more palatable, much more optimal solutions where you, if you are preparing yourself for your family's sake so that when the time comes, if the time comes, okay, that you don't, and, and our medical technology really prevents people from dying, okay, right away. And so long-term care is looking to occur to a seven out of 10 of us who are age 65 and older. Seven out of 10 Americans age 65 and older are likely to experience an, uh, at least one bout of long-term care in their lifetimes. How are you going to pay for that? Because the average cost of long-term care is just shy of $9,000 a month. Just call it $9,000 a month, given inflation. Yeah, the new numbers haven't come out yet, but they will. And given the inflation that we've seen, you're likely to be 9,000 or above uh, going forward here. So the idea is to plan for this. If we set aside enough money early, we cut out a chunk early, we can grow it up so that we can compartmentalize that from the balance of our lifestyle expenses. And that way we can go ahead and enjoy our, our, our go-go years and our as we transition into our slow-go years without having fear of exposure financially to our families for the no-go years, which is long-term care, so really affecting age 85 and beyond. So from 80, 82, 83 to 85 and beyond, those are the no-go years primarily for most people. And we need to have the money set aside then, but we don't want to compromise our go-go and our slow-go years. We want to enjoy our retirement and be happy, okay? So that requires a plan, all right? We don't use, we don't play the golf course with one club. We don't fish with only one bait. We use a variety of tools appropriate for the circumstances that we're in, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Some people, we've had several people come up and say, well, I have this, well, I have that. What you need is a plan and, and incorporates a variety of different tools so that you are properly prepared to negotiate those rough seas if and when they come, all right? Okay, so we'd love to help you. Reach out, help us, help you, and let us know. And by the way, we're gonna continue to go with the uh, the Marcus Best Commodity right now on the way out the door. I'm telling you, the, uh, the, uh, the United States Natural Gas, that's my gift to you for staying this long in the thing, all right? So until next week, you stay happy. It's the key to longevity.